The 13th Desmond Tutu International Peace Lecture celebrates peace, healing and courageous leadership. The lecture holds particular significance this year as we commemorate Mrs. Leo Tutu's 19th birthday. Mrs. Tutu, of course, played a pivotal role in the anti-apartheid movement. This year's theme serves as a tribute to her unwavering leadership. So we aim to, they obviously aim to celebrate and recognize the contributions of women's leadership on a global scale and within communities at large. Janet uh, Jumpson, Chief Executive Officer of the Desmond and Leo Tutu Legacy Foundation, and joins us to wane further. Janet, good afternoon and thank you for your time with us here on the ACBC. Hi, Liesl. Lovely to be with you and the, and the viewers. Mm. Let's look at the significance of hosting the annual lecture this time round and its aim given the current socio-political economic climate in South Africa. Yeah, I think I think we need to think about um, South Africa and the world. It's a particularly important time for platforms for peace to be out there in the world. Um, the International Peace Lecture, the annual Intellectual Peace Lecture was established in 2011 uh, in protest against South African government not giving a visa to the Dalai Lama for the Archer's 80th birthday. Um, and since then, it's been used every year as a real platform to bring together people in a commitment to peace, um, in a showcasing of moral courage, uh, in a real sense that we have to work in the in the name of and in the legacy of both the Archer and Mrs. Tutu uh, to really bring about social change and peace across the world. So we're delighted this year uh, that the, the lecture is in honor of Mama Lea. Um, we had a fantastic kickoff of her birthday birthday on the 14th of October um, and we're just really excited that we get to bring a powerful voice like Melinda French Gates to South Africa and into conversation uh, around the critical issues of peace and development. Um, Janet, let's look at how the lectures evolved and what can we expect this year given um, you know, some of the issues plaguing South Africa and the world over and how uh, crucial does the issue of leadership come to the fore given the role of women as we also edge closer to 16 days of activism against women and children and other vulnerable persons? Yeah, I think I think the question of women's leadership in society is absolutely fundamental. Um, where we've actually shaped it for this lecture is to talk about women's power, um, and I really think that we need to be thinking about how we build power and solidarity by women for women all across the world. At the moment, enormous solidarity needs to be had with the people of Palestine, uh, where we really are seeing an extraordinary uh, set of violence against mainly children uh, and women in, in Gaza. Um, but in general, what we aim for is societies where women have a really powerful voice, where women are able to represent their families and their communities in ways that fundamentally shift uh, society. Um, Part of the reason we identified Melinda French Gates as the speaker this year is that she wrote a wonderful book called The Moment of Lift, which is all about how societies transform when women get enough power. Um, and so our aim this year is to both honor the extraordinary power of Mrs. Tutu, as well as to put on a platform, a conversation about women's power. And as you say, leading up to the 16 days of, of action against violence against women, it's really, really important in South Africa and around the world to get behind women's struggles and to get behind women taking stands for peace, for, for development uh, against violence across South Africa and across the world. Well, speaking about restoring agency, tackling abuse, and even speaking to the um, power struggles that continue to pervade society, I know that the, um, there's additional activities that are also occurring. In addition to the lecture, there's also an exhibition that focuses on this, but also honors Mrs. Tutu's birthday. Perhaps you could speak to some of the extraordinary stories that are coming to the fore that show mm -hmm. this, um, portray this, this restored agency, the crucial role that they played as anti-apartheid um, struggle heroes and, and their legacy from a different vantage point. Mm. So, so one way we thought of honoring um, Mrs. Tutu's 90th was to tell the story of 90 other incredible women. Um, and we, we think it's really important, you know, one of the lessons we learned from the TRC was the power of storytelling and the importance of sharing our stories as a nation. So what we've done is we've collected 90 stories of 90 incredible women who each played a role in the anti-apartheid struggle. Most of these are not women's names that you would know. They're not big party political figures, but every single one of the stories are incredibly meaningful. And I think part of what we're trying to do is shine a light on the agency and power of every person 
wherever you are to make some kind of change. Um, so we've got incredible woman uh, profile, two of our, our wonderful favorites uh, who are best friends of Mama Lea, uh, Joyce Seroke and Brigelia Bam, really have shared with us their extraordinary leadership journeys. But beyond them, it's been, you know, community members in Worcester, it's been um, people in Joburg and in Cape Town, really reliving and sharing the actions that they took to make change even on the smallest level in, in taking action against apartheid. And I think something we often um, lose sight of is, is how powerful we can be in our context. Even while things are macro and very, very difficult to change, we believe it's every single one of those little actions that's captured in this exhibition that, that contributes towards South Africa's freedom and liberation. Um, we'd love to have people come in and visit the exhibition. It's on uh, at our building, at the old Granary building uh, in Batesenkant, in District 6 in Cape Town, and it will be available and, and present, presented on the night of the Peace Lecture next Friday. Uh, you know, Janet, you're speaking about the unsung heroes of society and how they uphold our society. They do not get the applause oftentimes, but they fight the good fight. And this is why South Africa and the world perhaps is still standing because of these unsung heroes. So thank you for honoring them and thank you for being part of this conversation here on the ACBC. Just as we wrap up very quickly, what is the call to action at this point, given that um, the lecture obviously had been established back in 2011? And how do you see it evolving from here on to? Yeah, so the lecture was initially, as I said, started as a almost a protest against uh, the South African government's refusal to give the Dalai Lama a, a visa. And so the Arch turned his 80th birthday into an online lecture, an online peace lecture. In the years in between, we've seen a whole range of different speakers. And I think one of the things we've been able to do is really bring together extraordinary local and international people uh, to shine a light on on different aspects and facets of peace. This year, we really wanted to make it as conversational as possible, to, to be a conversation um, that we can all feel connected to and part of. So the format's a little bit different. We're going to be having a number of South African women contributing to, uh, to the experience and contributing to the evening. And we think it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for each of us to reflect on our own roles in society. Um, I know that at the moment we still have tickets available, so if, if anyone would like to come to the Peace Lecture who's in Cape Town to go to Quicket, uh, you'll be able to find the tickets there. And then to join us, hopefully, um, online if you aren't able to get a ticket, just to be part of a process of committing ourselves to action, and particularly to action for peace and prosperity around the world.